Suzanne, I'll ask you to take roll call for us, please. Kathy Vanley. Here. Anthony Mendoza. Here. Chris Bryan. Here. Jacqueline Bass. Here. Roman Van Nauman. Here. Arch Frank. Here. Todd English. Here. <clears throat> well, welcome, everybody. Nice to have a full house. Uh, the first thing on our deal here is comments from the public. Uh, is everybody here for presentations, or does anybody have anything they want to talk about otherwise? Okay, I'm going to assume everybody's here for presentations. Uh, adoption of the agenda, you guys have one in front of you that's got a few red marks on there for the changes that were made. Other than that, there are no other changes, so I would entertain a motion to approve this as it sits in front of us. I'd make the motion to adopt it as it's presented. I'll second. Moved by Art, seconded by Chris. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the GYC presentation, uh, which is uh, one of the students that are standing up here, I will turn it over to uh, Mrs. Forsythe and Mr. Flax to hand out a pretty cool award here. Uh, so our sixth through eighth students um, participated in the math competition in Scott City, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong, children. Uh, Scott City, and we were the GWAC champions. So that's really uh, certificates for all of them and then Mr. Dyke has some individual placements that he'll kind of go through as we go. So COVID Latrell, <laughs> Garrison Kite, Alton Reed, Drew Kugler, Mia Mendez Roman, Craig Hennings, Big Hennings, Eric Hennings. <laughs> Wyatt Yeager, Banks Copper, <coughs> Emery Sheevy, Rhett Vanley, Zayla Hunsaker, Allie Hessman, Spencer Bath, Mara McCann, Cash Beeler, Benjamin Kane, and then there's some students that are not here. So Cole Unruh, he's an elementary student. Blaze Arlano, and then Chase Smith. So congratulations, guys! Good job. There you go. Mr. Dyke. So the um, they take three tests, quick calculations, which is mental math. Geometry and problem solving. Um, at the sixth grade level, Blaze was first in quick calculations. Spencer was first in geometry. And Spencer was actually first place overall in sixth grade. Seventh grade, Zayla was third in problem solving. And then at the eighth grade level, um, and they made a comment about this. Cimarron was first, second, and third in all three oh, yeah. categories. Um, in quick calculations, Alton tied for third, Drew was second, and Garrison was first. Geometry, Mara was third, Garrison was second, Alton was first. And problem solving, Alton was third. Mara was second, Garrison was first. And so overall in eighth grade, Mara was third, Alton was second, Garrison was first. So the um, seventh and eighth graders this year were second last year at GWAC. So we upped the game this year and all the champions. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank, yeah, thank you. Good job, parents. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Good job, teachers. Thank you. 
Mrs. Edmondson, do you want do you want uh, Alex? Yeah, we can start with Alex. So we have a couple fifth graders that have been working on their genius hour. They presented to their um, students and Miss Chance and Miss Batman. They chose to have these two students uh, come up and. We'll start with Alex McTaggart. Do you have a clicker? I, I am it. Okay. Well, Alex, you could probably, you just touch it. He could probably just touch it and. There you go. Yep. Okay, go ahead. We'll see. The reason I did this genius hour about YouTube is so I could learn more about YouTube. I'll be your clicker. You tell me when, okay? Maybe I'll be a player. <laughs> Essential question. How to become famous? This is a YouTube home store. The most famous YouTubers are T-Series and Mr. Beast. This is the old YouTube home screen. I did not make the border, so that's just what it looked like. <laughs> How to get famous. Post every day. <coughs> To make an account, first you press your profile in the top right corner, then click switch account. Press add account, then tap create new account. And enter your preferred details. Now you have made your account. To post on YouTube mobile, you have to press this button at the bottom middle. And then Press the video you want, add details, and done. To post on anything besides mobile, you press create, and it will bring you to YouTube Studio. Then you will press create in studios. It will tell you to enter a file, enter your videos, add details, and done. This is the old subscribe button. This is the new subscribe button. This is the back one. <laughs> the way to get the most views is to post on shorts with 60 second videos only. What the algorithm is. The algorithm looks at your content and sees what type of content you make. How the algorithm works. Once you start to get popular, it knows what types of videos you make and projects them. This usually takes around 100 to 500 subscribers for this to happen. Uh, you just click. click again. Yeah. YouTube. <clears throat> So on your videos, you need to do all of this. You'll need to set up two-factor authentication, which you can do with a mobile device. Make sure you follow all of the YouTube policies and community guidelines when you make content. That will ensure that you don't get any community guidelines right. If you've got one, you can't apply them on your videos. And now, but I'm not happy you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of time hours in the last month. Or 1,000 subscribers with 10 million public YouTube videos. Do all of that on one side and one side. And that's actually the YouTube channel. Canadian 
เออจะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์แอปคัพคัพหรือคุณสามารถทำอะไรต่อไปได้จะได้ยินวิดีโอที่ฮัสต์Posted on April 23, 2005, with 309 million views, made by YouTube employee Jod, shown in the next slide. Which one? Yeah. Right from the uh, open. <laughs> Cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long, really long. Oops, I won't want to. No, no, no I didn't. Yeah. I'm about to go forward one more. The most viewed video is Baby Shark Dance with 14 billion views, posted on June 17, 2016. Made by Ping Fong, played in the next slide. Sorry for getting it stuck in your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Made by Ping Fong, played in the next slide. Sorry for getting it stuck in your head. I'm sorry, buddy. This isn't working as well. <laughs> Baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, I have a channel of my own called Alex Does Epic Stuff. YouTube.com, web chat archive, 9to5google.com, app store slash cat cat, Wikipedia, Jot, ping pong, my channel. Made by Alexander William Scott McTaggart. Any you? questions? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> How many videos have you made, do you think? Uh, 66. Wow. wow. All right. Good job. How many followers? 100. All right. Ooh, cool. Very cool. Very nice. You have more followers now. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So Genius Hour is, they get to pick a topic of their choice. Um, obviously, we have to approve it. Some of them do it on their pets, but it's something that they are interested in that they can become a genius about. So they do the research, and then they put a slideshow together, and they present to the whole class. Parents are invited. So 
that's what she said. And our next presenter is Sebastian Cardiel. So how do I move it? Can you just click on it? Say again. So how do I, I we'll we'll see here. Go ahead. You can try it. Okay. I yeah. think I'll have to be your clicker. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> By Sebastian Cardio. Here's some pictures. The central question. Who is Napoleon in all of his historical wars? Who is Napoleon born? He was born right there. One day, one part of course ago, <laughs> made independence and said, Okay, we have made independence, so it's probably not worth your time to stop us. The other part said, okay, hey, France, want to buy this island? France said, but sure thing, and they took it, right in time to make Napoleon French. Napoleon was born on August 15, 1769. Here's some more facts about him. Born in 1769, three weeks after the French took over his island home of Corsica. Here it is, you can see it. Well, <clears throat> his father was a lawyer who took to French rule quickly, but Napoleon hated France and felt like his brother betrayed his country. In 1778, at nine years old, Napoleon was sent to France for the first time to a special military school called Bernard. Napoleon getting shot. That's a picture of him being, I'm pretty sure he's 24. Napoleon was sent to artillery school at age nine. He graduated as a lieutenant at age 16. He was promoted to captain at age 22. Then he turned to lieutenant colonel at age 23. And then Brud Brudier Brigadier. Brigadier General at age 24. Good job. Here's a video. Now, if you kind of show like his whole, his whole reign as like emperor in one video. The French Revolution. Napoleon wanted to be strong, so when the French Revolution came, Napoleon knew that, that this will help him be more popular. So he fought to protect the revolution and got promoted. Most importantly, he got stronger. After the revolution, that was the king before um, Napoleon took over. After the revolution, other countries in Europe were not happy because they were monarchies. In the French had a revolution was about stopping monarchy. They didn't want their people to revolt, so war began. The first coalition war began. Who is in the Napoleonic Wars? On one side was France and the Kingdom of Italy and others. On the other side was Great Britain, Persia, Austria, Russia, Sweden, Portugal, Spain, Sicily, and others. Who do you think won the first coalition? Blue or red? Uh, Blue actually ended up winning the first coalition, not only to the set, the seventh, when where Napoleon ended up losing. He crosses the Alps. Napoleon wanted to cross the Alps to gain the element of surprise, and guess what? It worked. And drove Austria to the capital and forced Austria to resign the war. Here's some pictures. Here's what he crossed. I don't think anyone would want to trust that. <laughs> the point invades Russia. On June 24, 1812, the Grande Army, led by French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte, crossed the Neiman River, invading Russia from present day Poland. The result was a disaster for the French. The Russian army refused to engage with Napoleon's Grande Army of more than 500 European troops. They burned all the cities, making it scorched earth. They then turned the tide and made an opinion. A picture of it, it was winter, so made a coin, making it for an a lot harder. 
The battle, the battle of Waterloo. <laughs> The Battle of Waterloo was fought on Sunday, June 18, 1850, near Waterloo, ma marking the end of the Napoleonic Wars. A French army under the command of Napoleon was defeated by two armies of the Seventh Coalition in the most popular and deadly war in the Napoleonic Wars. Here's some pictures. Napoleon was exiled and died. The point was exiled to St. Helena and died there in May 5, 1821. He was getting sicker for months, suffering from recurring abdominal pain, yeah. and died at age 51. Good job on that word. Sides. Uh, that one I just used a lot on this one that helped me get all of those information. <laughs> Thank you for watching my slideshow. Hope you enjoyed. Very good. Uh -huh. Remember, Napoleon is short. He was only five foot six. Any questions? <laughs> what made you become interested in Napoleon? Well, I heard about him and I heard that he was like really popular in this, and I really liked learning about wars, and I thought this would be interesting. Very cool. Very nice. Great job. Good Thanks. job. Good job. Good job. I'll try and make the nice sites. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have some of our culinary arts students. Um, so Mrs. Schmidt teaches culinary essentials, culinary arts, and baking and pastry. So um, we have some students here, local, Logan Heddleson, Logan Seifert, and Cassidy Helton. And they have made some macarons for you guys because they made them a few months ago, and I really like them. So I yeah. asked Mrs. Schmidt to make them frequently. Um, but they'll explain what they've done. These kids have actually cooked for us for a lot of our meals at the school. So um, we really enjoy her class. So I'll let them present to you guys. Yeah. I told him I was going to do the first two slides because okay. the first one there is just the, the three classes that I'm teaching currently. And this is part of the hospitality and tourism pathway that we have because we have three different pathways that, um, that my classes that I teach kind of uh, fulfill the, the whatever it is needs for those pathways. We'll go to the next. My junior high kids, I didn't bring any of them here, but I wanted to show you this because my junior high kids learn to cook just as much as, as my other kids do. And they, um, in October, they wanted to prepare their own lunch. And so they wanted to make chicken curry. And they did that along with the Indian yellow rice and then kulfi, which is a traditional Indian ice cream. And we had banana bread and we had some other snacks, but like they were all worried they weren't going to get enough food, you know? But they they ate every bit of what we had and were full and it was it really was quite delicious. So I was very impressed with it myself. And those are the kids in that picture over there that actually were part of that group. So anyway, mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Cassidy. Culinary essentials. Learning basic nutrition, safety in the kitchen, and simple recipes. At Thanksgiving, we made a meal for the class. Each group made a different part of the meal, and Mrs. Schmidt provided the turkey. Stuffing, green beans, casseroles, sweet potatoes, and pies. Other items we made. Various cookies, pumpkin rolls, muffins, etc. Sometimes even vegetables from the school garden, pumpkin, and zucchini. Culinary arts. Main class for making large amounts of food for different activities for hospitality rooms, etc. Second semester, we always make international foods. We have made food from several European and Asian countries, different breads and sweets mostly. So that's a brioche Sorry. bread, the first one, and then some egg rolls that we made. So um, the kids, typically we don't make the same thing over and over because I have the students try to find different things that they're interested in. And so we do different 
French things or Asian things or whatever. Okay. Learning to cook for a large number of people. Menu for parent teacher conferences in the fall. Mexican fiesta, street tacos, beans, rice, fruit, chips, salsa, and all the extras. Queso, guacamole, etc. Pulled pork and barbecue, beef sandwiches, baked beans, macaroni, salad, fresh cookies. Menu for parent teacher conferences in spring. Potato bar with homemade show and all the fixings. New cheesecakes, brownies, fruit, fresh fruits, and veggies. Mexican fiesta, street tacos, enchiladas, and all the sides. Tacopia cheesecake. Arroz con leche. Arroz con leche <laughs> and fruit salad. And yeah, on that one, um, we did all of my kids, all of my students become chefs. And so it kind of gets broke up among the different classes as to which ones are doing what part of the meals. My culinary arts class does a lot of the like planning and then they do like the big meat stuff and that, and then everybody else does all the rest. And we were able to provide really nice meals for our, our teachers for about, I'd say a third of what we would pay if we had to pay through the food service. There we go. Boys. Boys. <laughs> to start, we took uh, egg whites and uh, beat them till they came to points. And then you add vanilla and powdered sugar and you pipe them out onto a tray. You got to bang the tray to get all the air bubbles out of them. And then you bake them and then fill them with buttercream. And so, yeah. Did we bring any extra to fill? No, I didn't bring any to fill. Um, I was going to bring some extras to fill, but then we filled them all out last time. So, and then people were eating them. So, <laughs> anyway. I'll have two today. <laughs> oh, two. They were good. Um, I'm I'm kind of glad of Stella left because she was like professional with that. <laughs> but that uh, we but these um they do have some samples for you guys to try. So, well, I have to. Okay, so do you guys have any questions for them? Yeah, that's our last one. I would like to try one. Yeah. yeah. You guys might want to grab your own if you yeah. boys are hands fire on the cleaners. Thank you very much, guys. Those green ones like that have a little mint. Oh, mint. Kind of Thank you. Mint. Uh, a little bit. Mint. Then. Are they all mint? No, the white ones are plain. Oh, they have buttercream. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> the white ones are good. I, they're all good, but I mean, I ate two of those. Thank you, Lyman. Yeah, I'm going to miss I took yours. Yeah. Oh, yes, I want another one. Thanks, Logan. You're welcome. And Logan. Not bad. Good mm -hmm. work in around the room. Yeah. 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 White's pretty good. Yeah, good. I need to take one of each. It's really hard. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We even Thank you. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Thank Very you. nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come back every meeting with Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, I'm not it can be bought. The egg roll looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Sort of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. I know you. Uh, <laughs> I just started. No, I better. I better, I better yeah, no. have a little wheel power here. I'll give it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna dive right in, move along. So consent agenda. Uh, we've got the minutes, bills, payroll. Um, any questions on those two items first? Um, on the employment and resignations, you should have a new sheet in there. Uh, I'm not going to read all the names. You got a fairly long list of uh, summer maintenance and custodial food people that are they are recommending to hire uh, a high school assistant, baseball coach, and then let's what five different resignations? No, I guess you can't double count the names. Twice four. Resignations. 
And then we have the reports from the directors and the principals. I don't believe there were any committee meetings in the last there, two meetings. That is correct. There were not. There wasn't even a special meeting, was there? No. Okay. So I think H and I didn't need to didn't need to be on there. Change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I need to be on the it? Well, B, it's up in B. B and I are the same. Oh, they're the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are there any questions for anybody? Did anybody have a chance to review this before the meeting? <laughs> Pardon and I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve this consent agenda. Second that. Been moved by Jackie, seconded by Jesse. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. No pulled items. We'll move into the oral reports, uh, starting with Mrs. Edmondson. Anything additional? Um, I just wanted to add that. Tammy Coford from the Fundamental Learning Center. Um, that is the place where we had about six teachers go get training in alphabetic phonics. Um, Stevie Coles, Denise Miller, and Celia Stuffy are currently teaching it daily in our building, um, and Mrs. Garcia. So they reached out saying that our school is pushing the uh, science of reading and you know, above and beyond. And so they want to come out and showcase a short video of them with kids not in it, but of them uh, teaching like short lessons and a couple teachers from Montezuma and Copeland. And then they will turn that into uh, advertisement basically to encourage teachers to come out and get the training and, you know, get on board with the phonics um and get the training so i will show that hopefully in may the short video of stuff so i thought that was really neat that they're looking at us to you know get teachers involved so i just wanted to share that and i don't really have anything else besides the year is coming to an end fast and lots of activities coming up well, very good good job getting that accomplished Mr. Flax? Uh, the only thing that I actually forgot in my report is we are hosting the GWAC art show this week um, for today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So if you have any free time tomorrow is the public viewing. Uh, feel free to swing by the high school and walk around the walking track. We've got a nice setup going on over there. So, um, And then judging happens tomorrow, and then they get awards on Wednesday. So. It's a pretty cool thing. We get it this year and next year. So, so that's all the GUX schools. All the GUX schools. It's junior high, high school, and then we have two elementary schools competing as well this year. So they can kind of opt in or not. And there's only two elementaries in every other junior high and high school. So there's a lot of artwork. It's crazy. Do they break it by category or is it? Oh, there's, is it yeah, there's there's different, different categories. I think there's like you have your your drawing, your paintings, your ceramics. Like we got a bunch of tables and. It's pretty cool to see. I mean, there's a, a bunch of pieces hanging up, so really cool. But yeah, it's all along the, along the walking track. Mr. Evo did a great job of setting that all up today. So, really yeah. good. Cool. Hey, one quick question, and this is just because I've gotten this from half a dozen parents being 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 in track and a track parent. What was the what was the reason for not being able to make up our meet that we had canceled? Trying to find a common date with all the teams was just not 
boss the way I answered it. So I'm glad I answered it. Yeah, that, that is exactly. Well, I figured everybody probably well, that, schedule was full. That's the biggest thing. And then, like I tell everybody, like baseball, softball, it's just you and the other team. So right. it's really easy to find a com. Like you can go find a common day, yeah. track their like. We had an open date, but four others didn't. And then, right. so it was just a and back as soon, and forth. <laughs> as soon as that meet is canceled, the schools will look for something, look oh, yeah. for something yeah, right. as quickly as That's, they can. I think it becomes very difficult to get this. I think Ultimate fills within 45 minutes of us canceling. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, That's wild. Yeah. yeah. But thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was the only question absolutely. I had. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Figured I knew the answer before I asked <laughs> yeah, the question, sir. but I thought that was probably right. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything to add unless keep it a couple questions. Well, Mr. Waters, we'll slide right into you. Okay. Um, uh, if you start, mine kind of starts on page 22 and follows to 23 and following. Also, um, so this is an update on the uh, uh, the summer of 24 projects and what I've done so far. Playground renovation. I've had a couple of conversations. I have a phone call with Kara Goad tomorrow. We have worked with uh, Mammoth, which is a group out of uh, basically the Topeka area, actually Meriden. Um, but uh, we've we've worked with them. When I say we, I've worked with them a little bit. I think that Miss Edmondson has worked with them. The the best group has gone back to the teachers to try to find different thoughts of what they would like to see out there. The, the issue becomes, guys, that, that we're going to have to fit it within a budget and we're going to have to do it in phases or some other type of fundraising, whatever the case is, just because of the expense of it. But this is a start. And so we'll, uh, I have a meeting with Kara and we'll, we'll start to talk about where we would like to go. You can kind of see my notes there on the playground. The elementary uh, kitchen and locker room, the elementary is going to be... Um, uh, a little bit simpler because of the setup of the water system. We have one bid from Best Water, and we will get we'll work with Coligan once we get these. That's why I'm not going to say the number outside. I, I have a number here, but I won't say it. And we'll work with them just to see if both groups can bundle it together and maybe get us a, a little bit better deal. The high school and Tim, I may need I to turn email you. Okay, and. That one's a little bit more intricate, and why is that? Can you help okay. me there? Yeah, so <clears throat> there's actually three different <clears throat> three different systems at the high school. There's one that comes in. The main comes in back behind Mr. Giebler's room. It's a four-inch line, and it feeds the restrooms, uh, the south restrooms, the north restrooms, the office, staff lounge, and that's about in the outside, some of the outside. And then uh, it also feeds over into the restrooms behind the stage. Um, then you have the kitchen area that is supplied just by the kitchen. Then you have the basement, which is just the, the hold on. No, the main line from Giebler's feeds the basement as well. Um, then you have the Boag shop and wood shop that are on a separate line. So there's three different systems. Um, they were, Best Water said that they couldn't, it would be beyond what they can do to do a four inch. And the pressure and all the other stuff is just, there's a lot that goes into it. So I asked him, I said, can you do, what can we do for a kitchen and the locker rooms? And so he came up with a plan for the kitchen and the locker rooms. Um, it would be hot water only on the, the kitchen and the locker rooms because of the way that the cold water still runs, it still comes down through there in a four inch line. And then it reduces down to a three inch and then goes to a two inch. Um, and so they know you'll be able to connect onto a two inch. But he stated that um, with the two systems and the the reserve tank that he believes that we would have plenty of soft water for those units and the problem with with it is is like the the kitchen has one two three tankless heaters and downstairs in the locker room has four tankless heaters and then the rest of the building 
hot water is supplied by one boiler that's in Mr. D. Bluter's back closet. And so uh, to save on save on the on the systems, he suggested just doing hot water. Okay, thank you. Questions, questions there. A little bit more intricate at the build at the high school building. And I think part of that at least, remember that's that's almost a four different type of design. You've got the the ag buildings that we had built that finished up in December of 87, then the main building in whatever it was, 95, 96, and then the gym. So it's kind of a and I think the water kind of follows that is why that's a little bit of a different situation. Daycare renovation, working with Joey Yeager and construction, uh, that is that is on the way on, on that. They haven't done anything yet, but I know we're on the schedule. Main gym floor and Sandy, refinishing the, um, the, uh, the gym will be closed uh, basically from the day that the kids are out of school or teachers are out of school until the... Uh, last day of May, maybe even a couple days in June, but not May. And the issue is going to become that at the same time that we're doing that, we're also doing the, the commons area flooring. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to, you know, with administrative and coaches working together, we'll kind of have to maneuver between where they enter and exit for the kids during that time. But it's only a few weeks, so we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, uh, if you want to know what dot drills are, they're, they're the five dot drills, and they'll be underneath the bleachers. They won't be on the playing court or anything. So when we have our bleachers out, you wouldn't you wouldn't see those on there. Uh, Didn't you talk about painting something at the half court? Half court is I want the the big oh, blue no. jade. We bought the big blue. Boy, but we're going to have it. It's yeah. going to be there. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, new sinks in the elementary classroom. Stephen Cole's music room. Silly stuff. Your title one. Um, those will have the new rooms. I just received the the uh, the amounts. I have not got those put in yet, um, but I went ahead and made those orders. It is an eight week return time from when I signed the contract to when those come in. So we've got to got to kind of get to work on that. Um, District office, new front door, again, working with Joey Yeager. That's a smaller project. He, we're going to try to keep kind of the same wood look. It might be a little bit different, but kind of keep that same entrance and then and then just a, a, a better door, a better fitting door in there. Elementary carpet. Um, the, the, the best part probably for Diane and her crew is that most of those books in the two islands are on wheels. So we can just wheel them out, which is huge compared to taking every book off the shelves. Um, uh, uh, I visited with, with Ashley and I noticed here that on my comments, I put May 20 to June 6, that is not correct. That's the common area. The, the library will be following that. Um, Another smaller project, remember in the men's and women's restrooms that we use for basketball games, what I call our main restrooms, the drain actually sits up higher than the, than the water. So if we have an overflow of the toilet, it has to run uphill. Joey said, this is no big deal. He would come back and like cut 12 inches around the drain, drop the drain, put in some tile, and that way it would flow to the bottom. No big deal on either of those. Football, go ahead. Sorry, I no, sorry. Okay. Nope. Um, Replace the football goal goals. Um, I'm really glad that you can see on March 11th, I emailed to um, show approval of the field goal goal post. I emailed back on April 3rd. Um, Tanya had said that this is a special order and that it takes a while. And I, I just simply said, okay, and, you know, I was checking in. Well, come to find out it never was ordered. So now it's ordered on April 3rd or April 4th. They were ordered. So that'll come in and they will, they will do that work. On there again going to new classrooms uh the carpet on there you can see the cost which is actually lower than what i thought it was going to be I, I, honestly guys at least half if not more of the prices that i have quoted to the board are coming in less than what i quoted so that's, that's refreshing yeah <laughs> um this is an ashley project miss Payne, Ms. herring miss chance miss mowry's classroom uh, and Ashley will fit that in his summer schedule. 
uh, again here, this is where the commons area band hallway, that'll be on May 30 to June 6th. We have a, one of the things that has been talked about in the past is that when we pull up the old tile and put down the new, is could we run electricity into like a few places in the floor so that we would have charging stations there at, at both ends? I said I would look into it and I did. It's it's over twelve hundred dollars. Excuse me, it's over twelve hundred dollars for each one of those if we put in eight, it's almost ten thousand dollars. And it's not worth it to me. There are other places in this district that we need to spend ten thousand dollars. And so, you know, there's plenty of outlets on the walls or or wherever it may be that kids can can charge, and I think we'll be okay. So I, I am not approving that part of it. The last one that I have, and maybe you guys have it. Yeah, page 35. Um, this is one that's that, that's an add-on, and I we are not this is more for information, so you know kind of where we're at on our on our bleachers. Okay. So the the first thing that we had talked about was simply taking at our student section and just putting up a little barrier so that the kids are not down. Well, I think it's a great idea. The kids, we can take out the first row of seating. The kids will have plenty of room. They still get to do whatever they want to do, you know, as, as they always do at ball games. It's just that they wouldn't be able to be on the floor in that area, which causes some issues sometimes with inbounds balls and different things. The crazy thing is this company that we work with, and I won't say the prices out loud, but um, on the side there, you can see the price. And I was like, what in the world? And so I went down to Blattner Construction and said, can you design something like this that we just put in and, and just do one section? And so they're working there. They'll do some measurement looking at it. Oisington has kind of what we want. They'll look at how and see how it, it clamps on and different things that I guarantee you, we can do it for a lot less than what they're quoting here. Uh, service the bleachers, install new motors. Um, th that's something we really should look at and it's on the running document. It may not be this year, but we, we, we kind of need to look at that. The bleachers are becoming more and more difficult for Diane and the ladies to, to they, you know, obviously if you have a motor on it, it should come out evenly. And unfortunately over time, it, it just kind of waddles its way out and that uh, causes some issues. I would like to look into that. That is not a this year, it's something else that, that we can keep in mind. The turn rails, I don't mind if we get turn rails. I don't, I, that's whatever. But if you watch it, our games, and you're at the very top, and I usually see it with people going up, elderly people going up more than coming down, but we are actually missing one handrail, okay? So if you think about how we're going up, we have handrails, and then you have that one step that's like an inch and a half higher or two inches higher, on, and, and people catch that all the time. And, and the issue that we have is that from there, the big step, one more step, and then onto the track. Those three steps, they don't have a handrail anywhere on there to hold. Now, what a turn rail is, is it's more of a permanent structure where you just pick up, you turn it, and then your bleachers can go in. That can happen on every single row for the price that you see at the left there, those two added together. But again, I'm not for sure. Maybe if we have some money left over from the lower prices, I might want to look at this, but I really would like to look at something on that top row on those ones going around. Cause you know, uh, I did have a report of at, at prom, a person coming down and, and you know, you have two or three people helping him to make sure. And so probably I would take a look at that. Um, when you say service the bleachers, what does that mean? Okay, that, so servicing the bleachers is, is like some of the welds over time have become either broken or they're not as strong as what they should be. The leveling of the system, it's you know, just things like that. that, that a general service that, you know, obviously this is a company, so they suggest you do it every five years. Well, we've done 20 six or whatever it is okay you know so it's probably probably time to look at it for a little tlc yeah <laughs> okay yeah thank you you bet um and, and I, I meant to go up there and get a picture and i don't have a picture guys but but if you look across from from where the home team sits and, and you sit look across the the media row if you will sits up on a platform 
And we have had multiple people with chairs that have almost fallen off the back. We've had a couple that have actually. And of course, at that point in time, it really squeezes down the, the walkway area and different things. One thing that, that we could do that it is a possibility, if you think about our, our trap dump, uh, drum trap set that we built out and Ryan Miller did that, built it out. It pulled our drum set up off the floor, which is a great thing. And that sits up there and it works really well. If we were to take that idea, not have it as long, shorten it down to one bleacher, and then put them in that very top row, have a press row in there, I think it would work well. We would we would do the same thing, build a little bit of a platform, bring out some some railing, uh, you know, so they don't fall off. They would not be able to fall off the back. They would not come off the front, um, because and several of our games we're going to have our uh, our, our uh, broadcasting. Now, many teams are bringing their own broadcasting, and sometimes we'll have a radio station that broadcasts, you know, so you have that. The other part of this is people like to come to Cimarron for sub-state events. You know, we've got a great facility, and um, so we have put in for regional wrestling for next year, which is a massive event. Um, and it would be something that we would like to look into. I have no idea on price. We're working with a local construction person to uh, to at least begin talking to us about this, and I'll keep you informed. I'm not saying that we'll do it. I'm saying we'll, we'll I'll keep you informed. Yeah, Tim. We're actually in violation of fire code. If we do that? No, and with the way it's set up now, oh, well, because you. the hallway is supposed to be six foot with no obstructions. Yeah, and it's... It's less for it best. Yeah. <laughs> between the wall. Your exits are the other direction. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the people that are coming up, they have to go left or right. Oh yeah, because there would be. Could, could, yeah. I see what you're saying, but unless that's the fire, not what the unless the fire's to your right, and then you got yeah. to go left. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so those run right across. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're saying, but yeah. Yeah. That's an update on the project. Are there any questions there? Anything that we have? Yeah, appreciate it. Page 36 is the next one. Uh, wind farm uh, money disbursement and the uh, amount of money we have spent. You can see the, the difference. Now, if you, if you look back at our um, cash summary report, it shows that we have about $1.1 million in, in gifts and grants. Okay, that's true, but we have not paid for our $500,000 of, of summer of 24 projects either that's that's why that's up so we're we're uh we're saying about six hundred thousand is an actual number the ones in red are confirmed numbers the ones in in yellow are not but you can see that the two water softeners mm -hmm. came in significantly lower than what i was guessing okay um just as a reminder we, we have uh and our special education 613 board of directors, we have a meeting tomorrow. Uh, um, we are, as part of the co-op, supposed to have a, a representative from the USD 102. We do have a, an alternate, a person who is an alternate. If you feel that you would like to be on this, please let me know, and I will add your name to it. Glad no one is gone tonight, or there may be the person that was on this. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you anyway. Do you want to read <laughs> Um, I'm not making eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I would like to reiterate a couple of things that, that were said in the in the uh, uh, in the principal's pieces here. First of all, on the science of re uh, the science of reading, this is not exactly the easiest switch that we've had. You know, there there were there were some questions, a little bit of pushback. Uh, from teachers on wondering why we're making such big changes and different things. But to see that now we have other schools that are recognizing what we're doing and recognizing how we're doing it and the way that we're going about it is just that that's a really, really proud moment for USD 102. Uh, the other the other part of that that we just found out is that there will be or there should be or can be or whatever the word is. I'm not for sure exactly where we're at there, but that a teacher either has to have letters training or the science of reading training in their university or college 
credits, you know, in their courses, or they have to have two years of letter training within the school, or they have to take a very, very difficult science of reading test to be a, re a, to be a reading teacher in the elementary or a couple of classes in, in the junior high. So we are way ahead of the game. And I really appreciate the support from the Board of Education on making that happen. The second part is um, Ms. Forsyth had a call um, with our, uh, our KISA leader, is, uh, maybe leader is the name, I, I don't know, consultant, um, Amber Miller. And they just had a conversation about what to expect on this checkup that we have coming up. Remember, we were a pilot school, and I usually don't like to pilot things. I like to let a few schools go and then kind of be in that second wave. But I decided I wanted to be a part of this because I wanted to be a part of the beginning of KISA. Uh, they're calling it now KISA 2.0. KISA is the Kansas Accreditation System. That's, that's what that means. So um, gave a call today, and again, we got huge kudos to where we're at, what we're doing, how we're working through it, um, the, in fact, the words were that we are so far ahead of so many schools in, in making sure that we're, we're checking all the boxes and doing what we need to. This accreditation stuff is not for the weak. It, it is a much more difficult than, than what it used to be. So yeah, just a couple of points that really make me proud of our, of our school and, and what we're doing. So if you have any other questions, I sure will answer those. Mark, I think usually in your report you go over the dashboard. You want to? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can go over that. Yeah, let's go back here. So I'm just look very quick. Page three. Um, so first of all, on, on page three, we can see that um, we we are just ahead of of where we should be a half point. But remember, we are our general fund would be at about five point five five million, and our uh, supplemental is just under 1.7. So we have we have half a million dollars or so that is not accounted for in here. Um, that um, that I I look at finishing the year in decent shape. We will not be in great shape by any means, uh, but we will be able to cover everything that we have. Uh, and and then the the cash summary report. This is what I was referring to left hand side. If you go to gifts and grants number 35 and follow that across, you see it's 1.1 million, but of course, subtract out our half million of, of projects. Um, so really, the, I, I will tell you guys this, uh, um, later on here in the meeting, we will have our food service renewal and we'll, we'll talk about that. One of the things that the food service company said there were a couple of things that they wanted to do. One was to uh, hold the director as their employee, which they have in, in Lupe is, is their, their person and they've been able to hang on to her, which is, which is great for them. The, uh, the second thing is, is that they, because they're a larger company and they can both purchase the different things, they would save us money. This is uh, on where left-hand side, number 24, followed across where the $128,000 uh, that's probably one of the healthier balances we've had in quite a while in, in food service. In other words, we're not going, by law, we can't uh, transfer very much in there because you can only have three months of expenditures. Uh, that's one. But the second is we're probably not going to need to transfer much at all, in there, which helps us then with transferring into special ed or transferring into something else. Um, on special ed, uh, there will be uh, a little bit of an increase so that an increase from the state to us, which I am very hopeful means that our portion that we pay of local dollars going to 613 will be reduced. We currently pay about $300,000 of our money to 613, plus the $500,000 that just flows through. So it's about $800,000, we pay about 300,000. So hopefully that new money, um, specifically your tag for, Special Ed will help reduce that $300,000, which means that we have a little bit more money in our general fund or LLB. So I just read this before I got off today that uh, and anybody's guessed the governor will be toward or, or sign it, but I was reading where they were going to raise the exemption 
from household from forty two thousand to a hundred thousand on the state's portion. Yes. But then also lower that mill from twenty to nineteen and a half. So how will that okay. equate to dollars for us? Same exact same questions that I had. You're exactly right. So on your house, you're you know, for a long time it was the first twenty thousand dollars was well, commercial property too. The first twenty thousand dollars of general fund was exempt. Last year or two years ago, they moved that to 40,000. This upcoming year, they will move that to 100,000. So the first $100,000 is, is exempt from the property tax side. The issue for schools is that general fund, LLB, bond and interest and capital outlay, the four that we use are based upon property tax. Now, the other three do not count. It's only general fund that that $100,000 is taken off. So what they are saying in this is that they are lowering it from 20 mils to 19.5. And at the same time, they are backfilling that amount for, um, for LOB, capital outlay, and bond and interest. For those, they are backfilling that with state general fund money so that it is the same as 20 mils okay. rather than 19 and a half. However, with one stroke of the pen, that can be gone and it can be at 19.5, which would be a pretty good hit for us, you know, if they cap that at 19.5. And I'm, again, very thankful for the forward thinking of the Board of Education, but we still have a little bit of room by a little bit, I mean, two to three, maybe 4% of our LOB. Remember, we've kind of kept that steady over the years, many years, in fact, and that may pay big dividends for us if that goes from 20 to 19.5, that may be a reason to move that LOB a little bit to give us that cash back. So that's kind of where, okay. those are my thoughts. Yeah. Thanks for that. You bet. Any other questions for Mr. Waters? If not, we will move into, is this a first read or just an approval? This is an approval. Okay. So we have the JBCC policy, uh, which talks about capacity limits and us having to take non-resident um, students. Uh, if there's only one change, if there was even a change, but it was highlighted on page 40, but I didn't pick out what the change was. So. Okay, so there isn't a change, but this is what we're focusing on tonight. This is the part of the policy that we have to focus on. And that is that, um, on or before May 1st, which is where we're at here, that we um, that we have to post our capacity in each class. And remember, we we set ours at 75. 75, and, and where does that number come from? We had a class of 72, it's a graduating class of uh, 2019 of 72. And I'm telling you, that stretched the limits of everything that we had. <laughs> and if you take 75 by three teachers, now I want to be very, very careful in what I say on, on live television here. I'm, I'm not saying that if we get to 75, we stay at three teachers. I'm saying that that is our capacity. That's our top. That's our lid. Okay. Um, and that is for each class, kindergarten through 12. Okay. And we just kept it the same moving forward. We have to do this. Because if you get to 76 or 77, anything over, then you go into a lottery system that's kind of laid out in this policy, okay? And there's different steps. Do I think we'll get there? Probably not. Um, if we get there, do we have to follow our policy very closely? We do, because some kids are going to be invited in and others will not, just based upon the lottery system of, of what we have, okay? So our part here tonight is to take a look at page 44. In doing so, you can see the projected enrollment. Uh, well, first of all, you can see what our enrollment is for this year. And I've moved that forward so that it's the, the um, projected enrollment for next year. Okay. Um, and then you have the capacity limit. And then that is how many students we can accept in each grade, okay? The closest is the sophomore class at 19 students, meaning we would have to have 19 just freshmen move in, actually 20 freshmen move in before we went to a lottery, which is a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids. But 
this is what we have to approve. Um, I would ask for the board's approval and then this goes on to our website. And then, um, then we start to follow the policy from May 1st on, we start to follow the policy on, on who comes in and, and, and how that happens. Honestly, guys, for the first year, unless there is some type of expulsion or long-term suspension, we will have them for one year, almost regardless, not, not quite, but almost regardless. Then at the end of that first year, you do the evaluation. You, you, are, do they have a good grades? Are they in attendance? Um, you know, is there anything that is not in good standing? At the end of the first year, you have a chance to send them back to their home district. After that, it's pretty much that they're your kid after the first year. Okay. I am not making out of, di out of district students that have attended USD 102 for several years or even this last year. I'm not making them reapply because we have not had problems with those kids. They're, they're great kids. So I'm not making those families reapply. Any questions on that policy? Yeah, the only thing I see here is it doesn't look like you have to publish these open seats until June 1st. Okay, so based on what you anticipate our enrollment to be. Okay. Let me, let me read through that. Dot number three. You said you talked to you several weeks ago about some kid, but I think they shoot this kid. Oh, my God. And it's already been brought back. to the board and it's all these problems. We're not even called law enforcement. Right? Yeah. Law enforcement took care of it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not until June 1st. All right, well, we'll have our set. Okay, <laughs> right. okay thank you for that. Tom. And then there's um, the process has to be completed on or before July 15th, you know, both ways, which is pretty late. It seems like to me because if I, if I get 20 freshmen, I'm going to have to think about what I do for staffing, you know, or, or even worse, you know, if I were to, to get uh, 35 first graders, you know, got to. Well, we'd have to scan to figure out what to do. Okay. Questions there? Why just take half of those? Yeah. That's if exactly what I'm saying. Half that bet. amount will be good. You bet. You bet. Um, we just need a motion to. Yeah, let me, let me write the approved policy to oh. GBCC. Yeah, go ahead. Make motion. I'd make the motion to approve the policy to GBTC on capacity limits. Been moved by Arch. I'll second that. Second by Chris. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? That carries. <clears throat> um, 8A is teacher contracts for the 24 25. Um, we do need an executive session. Places because I noticed they're on the phone and that's an executive session. Okay. If we want to go on to the next one, please. Let's. Uh, so we'll jump over 8A and go to 8B um, until they can come back in the room, uh, which would be the renewal of OPUS contract. Okay, the renewal of the OPUS contract here is, uh, is this, this will be our third contract if we choose to do it. Okay, I need to get to the correct page here. We are on page 51. On page 51, different columns. The first column, 22, 23, you will see the different prices that we paid, that we agreed to in that year. One of the most important is at the bottom, the second to the bottom, 386.50 per meal. Does that make sense when I'm out there? 23, 24, they changed to 435 per mil. That was a 12.5% increase. This next year, they are proposing to go to 466.5, which is a 7.24. The overall increase, the, the maximum increase that they could have got, I think, was at, at, at 7, I believe, right, at 7%. So they did not go with the full, um, the full amount. You will also see that there are programs that they listed such as, and I don't even know some of these, the after school snack, after, uh, after school breakfast, lunches, all these different things that we do not utilize as a school. We have tried to, they're not successful programs in USD 102. They just, they're not. And so 
that's why you see a lot of zeros there where some other years there were numbers. Um, so what do we do, right? That's really the question. We've, we've had some struggles. We've talked about our struggles. Um, uh, you know, uh, not having enough food or right now with, you know, kind of our spring schedule, just the way it goes, that there's food being wasted. Well, I don't, I don't like that on either side. You know, I, the food service company tends to focus a lot on meals that are thrown away. I tend to focus a lot on kids not getting a meal. It's maybe a, a difference of how we see life. I don't know, but um, but at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think that we're we continue to work with them. This is our third contract. Remember, it's a five-year contract, but it is one-year contract. So we can we we can end this at any time. We could end it tonight if we want. Um, what my suggestion to the board is is to do and kind of follow the lead of Ulysses. Ulysses had OPA for quite a few years, and then they chose to um, um, open it up for bid, which we will have to in year five, no matter what, right? And there will be other places that look into us. And um, uh, Ulysses went with a group out of, uh, out of Texas, and they said it's relatively the same, but it, it seems like they're getting a little bit better service than than what they were. But what we cannot do, my understanding is, we cannot break the contract with OPA and then reopen it back up for bids. It would have to be in that in that fifth year, if that makes sense. So you can't uh, re you can't rebid it until year five. That, that's my understanding. That's my understanding. So if we didn't renew with them, we would have to hire our own food food service back then. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't want to do that. No, that scares me. It's it's tough, guys. It's, it's not tough. good. It's not I just I'm frustrated because it's not what was sold to us originally. Um, You're exactly right. No, I agree with that. In, be ready to make a move at year five, it sounds like. And I and I will tell you guys I've said this before from when we began in, in basically April of twenty. 21, I'm sorry, in April of 21 through May of 21, those six or seven weeks were some of the best weeks that our kids had ever ate food in this school. It really was. Yeah. And then they were excited. Even some staff were excited. And, and. Do you feel like that's by design? Do you think that that was a okay. honeymoon phase for them too? Or what I, I think a little bit of a, yes, absolutely. I think that, that maybe looking back on it, Maybe the director they had at that time um, really put out a lot of food and there was waste. I know there was. <laughs> um, so I think that's part of the issue on their side, not our side, but their side. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think if we wanted to break it and put it back out for bid, you'd need to have like Kirk Campbell reviewed the contract yeah. to see, yeah. you know, them failing failing to provide meals to kids. Is that a yeah. you um, think that'd a, be a is that a void or a breach of the contract that, yeah. that would give you a, an out? So yeah. I mean if, if you wanted to to go that route, I guess we could have him do a quick perusal of that to see if there is an out. But and know. how fast do we or how soon do we need to do this? This is this meeting. This, this meeting they kind of got you in the corner a little bit. I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. But if we want it out, you know, after next year, yeah, you'd know, yeah. you know, that's because exactly. you could you could put some heat against them if you did have a yeah. That's like to say, though, um, I agree with you. I don't think we have any option this year. I don't. There's nobody beating down the door to come run our food service. This is the third year. year when we get done with this year. It's year three. Are we yeah. entering four? Or are we We're entering, entering three? three? We're entering three. Entering three. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where we can see. Yeah, on page 51. One, it two, started three, 21 eight. or started 22? Well, re remember, started April of 21 was that seven week trial. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It was just a trial. And then that fall of 21 yeah. was started. You know, that's still got three more years to go before we can put that to bed if we can't break the contract. Yeah, yeah. If, if not. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, we're over a barrel right at the moment, aren't we? 
little bit. I, I can realize it. And we can certainly continue these conversations next year. I have to look at the, at the contract, do those things, get ahead of it. Probably the thing is there anything that we can keep? I mean, is there any dialogue we can continue to have with them as we move forward to this new school? You're like, hey, we need to be do a yeah. better job. <laughs> I mean, is there any, does we, it just fall on deaf ears or what are we yeah, at? I think a little bit sometimes I feel like it does. Yeah. I, I mean, I've tried visiting with them. I know, I, I know that principals have several times it's a little bit easier at the elementary i mean they they select their meal they have their little sign and they walk through the high school it, it's just different and and i can tell you guys this is what i was going to end on in the earlier conversation um we've gone from april 21 those seven weeks where i think there was probably five kids that brought lunches to i i can't even count how many kids we have that bring lunches to their own lunch to school. Part of that is we have microwaves to help them out in, the, in junior high and high school. I get that. But the other part is they they bring their own lunch. They want their own lunch rather than school lunch. And I would think that that would be a driving factor for open more than anything else that we do because they're in the business of selling meals. Yeah. Know, that's their business. That's the complaint from one of the kids in my house is the quality. Yeah. 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 And they're a frequent lunch packer. Yeah. 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 I, I don't you know what I mean. That's, my daughter says it's unrecognizable some days. I mean, she's <laughs> prison slop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but what do we do? Need to be getting leads on a food service director? <laughs> if not, I think we're, we're I mean, and yeah, it's there. That's where we're at. You know? I gave um, the elementary students a survey. Like, do you bring your lunch? And most of them buy our lunch. One of them was like delicious, horrible, you know, unrecognizable. And it was all pretty positive on our side. I mean, there was, it wasn't delicious, but it was good. So Suzanne has the results of those. What do you That's see over at your building? Um, we gave the survey to the staff and the students, and it was not, I mean, they weren't positive at all. They're pretty honest on theirs. Um, I'll share them at the site council on Wednesday, and then you guys will get a copy. Or you can have it now. It's on my computer. I guess it's neither here nor there, but I wonder, East, the honeymoon phase, how much of that was due to there were, didn't, weren't there more employees in the beginning because there were two more? Yeah. Yeah. And that was a big claim to fame, or the, not, that's the wrong phrase. They said we had too many employees, and they, they could do it with fewer. They did. And so there was some natural attrition, and now it's... Yeah, yeah, there were, there were, there were some that on the USD 102 side that resigned right. during that time that they did not pick up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but did not pick up. Right. It seems like that's a big part of it, but I, I mean... Yeah. yeah, the bottom line, they're fighting the same problem we were fighting and why we got in bed with them in the first place. Yeah, you're right, Art. You know? You're right. <laughs> Pretty universal, not having enough help. Yeah. Yeah. Or quality help or qualified help, whatever you want to say. Help that shows up to work. Yeah. Yeah. Forward with that, I would recommend that we approve the presented 2425 uh, open food service management content. I can't even get conscious to make the motion. <laughs> Anybody want to make a motion to accept the OPA contract? All the Five seconds. All second. Second by Anthony. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Six one. No, we'll go back. Okay. Uh, so back to 8A, which is teaching contracts, executive session, and Mr. Waters said 15 minutes. I'll make a motion for 20. Well, oh, he actually said 10 to 15, so I took the high side. <laughs> <laughs> Can we roll it over to the next executive session? <laughs> well, I'll second whatever we decide. So. <laughs>
I have a motion for 50 or for 20 and a second for 20. All in favor say aye. aye. I hope I have egg on my face here. If I do five minutes, we'll be done. <laughs> that won't be fine, Mark. <laughs>
There we go. Um, we're up and going. Okay, so classified employees. Um, when we began the American Affordable Health Care Act, ACA, sometimes known as Obamacare, when we began that, there were look back periods. And you could look back in one year, you could look back at 30 days, you could look back at the look back was different. Somewhere along the line, that has changed. The look back period has changed. And so for us, what that means is that they are now looking at um, uh, those employees that have uh, 30 hours a week or more. Well, most of ours do through nine months, right? And so that um, in the full calculations, as you take that out to a year, that means that they are now eligible for our health insurance, okay? They are not necessarily eligible for the $445 per person, okay? That, that's kind of a separate deal because you're, you're classified and you're certified. One is negotiated, one is not. And so we have that. So starting in July 1, our classified employees will be eligible. And if you look back a couple of years, we're actually paying a little bit of a penalty because uh, one of the classified employees went to the exchange and that started, that kind of kicked off a checkbox of federal mandates on, on ACA. And so we that's why they, they will be eligible. It has to meet a two-pronged piece. It has to be accessible, which we're making it accessible in July 1, and it has to be affordable. And that's the one that, that we'll have to work through with Gallagher. And Gallagher is going to do a... Uh, uh, What's it called? Uh, a compliance audit. Yeah, compliance audit to help us out with that piece. So I'm just bringing that to your attention. I can tell you, as classified employees that are non 12 month, this is going to be pretty hard for them if they want insurance through us. Pretty difficult. So that's really all I have. Okay. Uh, next is just our renewal of our KSB uh, membership. I think Mark, or Mark. Mr. Waters had uh, elected just the membership without option two of 85, 49, 72, and the legal fund of 27, 50. That is correct. Any discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion to renew our membership with the legal fund. I'll make the motion. It's been moved by Chris. I'll second it. Second by Anthony. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, last year, an executive session of non elected personnel, and uh, I need 15 to 20 minutes. I can make a motion for 20 minutes. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. <laughs> Did we approve the teachers as presented? No. You gotta do that. Okay. We gotta that. Oh, we come
Yeah, baseball. Excuse me. Okay. I don't care when. Just let me know when we're done or when our time's up. We'll sit here and look at each other. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. It's up. Okay. Uh, I failed to ask for a motion to approve the teacher contract, so we're going to uh, jump back, and I would entertain a motion to approve the teacher's contracts. I would make that motion. I would second it. It's been moved by Chris and seconded by Jackie. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. With that, I will make a, that my term. favorite motion <laughs> to adjourn this meeting. Moved by Arch to adjourn. I'll second it. Second by Anthony. 